So a couple of things to talk about this morning. One is, is this momentous event that happens in the Old Testament. And this is uh, the nation of Israel going down to Egypt. And, and, uh, and a few years ago, we did hear the Bible timeline. And the Bible timeline was kind of a, a, a broad look at all of the, the major events in the, in, in the church unfolding or the nation of Israel unfolding. And here they are. And, and so I call your attention to the fact that this huge thing is happening. They're going down because of the famine into Egypt. And how long are they going to be in Egypt? 400 years. And what's going to happen to them in Egypt? Eventually, they are going to become enslaved. And they're going to be terribly persecuted. And they're going to cry out to God. And then Moses is going to lead them out and, uh, and back to the Holy Land. So just wanted to point that out and... And, uh, and maybe if you, you can do the Bible timeline on your own, maybe we'll do it again here one of these days. But it was a great kind of overview of putting the major blocks into place and kind of having an understanding of the narrative. And the narrative, we just get in these little tiny, little tiny far scattered uh, readings at Mass. Um, so then we have in the Gospel, our Lord is um, telling us, that the pagans and uh, the, the Jews are going to persecute the Christians, especially in this time. Jesus talks about, amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. And one of the, one of the manifestations of the coming of the kingdom was the destruction of the temple. When, when the temple, which was the centerpiece of the of the Jewish identity was destroyed. A new era was upon the world. And that was a kind of a, a, a visitation of, of God's presence and power. So that's, I, I believe strongly, that when Jesus says, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. So this one generation till from 33 roughly to about 70. Now, why are Christians going to be persecuted? You ever think about that? You ever ask yourself that question? You know, the, one of the charges of the Roman Empire against the Christians was atheism. Because they refused to worship the pagan gods. And we think about, today we celebrate um, St. Kateri Tekawitha. And when she converted to Christianity, she was persecuted by her tribe. Why? Because she gave up the earth god and the sun god and, and the, the other gods. Another reason that she would have been persecuted, and I heard this recently, um, a, a commentary uh, from kind of a neo-pagan, if you will, talking about when the Christians were being thrown to the lions in ancient Rome. And, uh, and part of the reason they were being thrown to the lines in ancient Rome is because the Christians were saying, your body is sacred. Human sexuality is sacred. Don't go to the temple prostitutes. Don't, don't worship the gods in that way. And the people are like, who are you? Off with their head. And now we have to say the same thing, don't we? We have to say your body is sacred. Sexuality is sacred. Marriage is sacred. And the guy was saying, this is like just a couple years ago, off with their heads. We should start persecuting them. Well, it's coming, okay. But, so we have to stand up for the God and the sacredness of our body. Calling people to out of the darkness into the wonderful light. You know, life is a precious gift. And... Uh, and we were made in the image and likeness of God and, and holding that truth before people and challenging them to live up to what they were created to be. Right? Sounds like a positive message, right? But Jesus tells us they're going to scourge you and you're going to be led before governors. I was thinking about St. Paul. I can't not mention St. Paul. St. Paul. I was thinking about St. Paul being dragged before the Roman Empire, emperor, dragged before 
the governors, and it was, this is a prophecy of his life. Now, so my brothers and sisters, we have a great example, the Lily of the Mohawks, who was converted, dedicated her life to Christ, took a vow of chastity, and was persecuted by, by her tribe, eventually had to escape. And, uh, and so we hold her up as a beautiful example of faith. And we pray that in a way that is hopeful and positive and shines the light before the nations, we can say, God loves you. God has created you for something wonderful, that your body is sacred and marriage is sacred, and hope that message draws people to it. But if we think there's going to be no persecution when we uphold our Lord's teaching, I think uh, we're naive. So but we pray for the courage, the courage of Blessed Kateri Tekawitha, and that we would know the faith and that we could proclaim the faith in word and in deed.